cousin and he's like a brother to me and i had the opportunity to work with him for several years as assistant to the pastor until i was called to my pastoral ship and one thing i wanted to bring bishop willie j bar jr phd we have out here i wanted to bring him on to the to the show um to talk to us about um something i'm dealing with now and i know a lot of i have a lot of other friends who are in the pastoral ship and many of us are working pastors right uh we are pastoring the church and we're working full time you know i've been doing it now for a little over a year and i had some struggles you know and oftentimes i, I turn to bishop willie j Barr for for assistance you know like how do you maneuver through this how do you deal with certain folks in the church like this or deacons or other ministers things you have to do as a lead pastor you know how do you maintain you know, that, that balance so i say well you know if i'm having these questions i'm sure other working pastors are having these same questions so i said why not just use this platform to start and talk to other pastors who are in the same boat that we're in you know he's been doing it for several years so i'll let him tell him by himself and then we'll get into um how do you maintain how do you balance that full-time pastoral ship and how do you maintain you know work life balance and family and all that stuff that goes in to um to your daily life so with that i'm gonna say hey bishop willie j ball talk to us introduce yourself sir hello pastor damon dorrington um yeah. to where do i start uh, I, I might as well start um from salvation um and, and work my way up to mm -hmm. um where i am now as um concise as possible yes sir. <clears throat> i um gave my life to christ at 17 okay um and um when when i gave my life to christ at 17 uh i, I felt his anointing i knew uh, that i was changed uh, i was i was a brand new person um then uh i actually had went to the church that, that um, i actually pastor now okay um at that time uh and what's the name of church you pastor great dalton baptist church dalton okay. baptist church incorporated at the time the great part was not part of it it was just okay. dalton baptist and the building that we're in uh was not the building at that time we that building that the building yeah. that we had at that time is now the administrative side right i remember it was like the, a little church it was like a little right. house church back house in the church day. right yeah. and the um the former pastor um uh god gave him a vision and um he built the edifice that we're in now um <clears throat> i've um once i once i accepted christ and um was serious about my ministry i asked uh the deacons if i could be a deacon mm -hmm. uh, and they said well sure um, and then i became a junior deacon okay um i actually was the first junior deacon in the great dalton baptist church in dalton baptist church okay and later on we had another but i was the first <clears throat> i'm i'm 10 years older than the other that came um so after becoming a junior deacon i knew i had the call of uh preaching ministry in my life um i knew that actually before i be i became uh, junior deacon but i wanted to be sure and hear from god uh, when that time was to do so and um it was about a, a, an entire year that i kept praying mm -hmm. and <clears throat> when i felt the unction from the holy spirit to uh preach the gospel amen mind amen. you um when i was 18 the lord told me that the church that i'm pastoring now that i would pastor amen. that church Amen. And, you know, I went on about my business to do other things Amen. until that time came. So <clears throat> that's where my salvation roots come from. Okay. Um, I accepted my call to preach my first initial sermon. I preached at the age of 19. Wow. Um, 19 and is young, man. You know, a lot of 19. Ooh, Got saved 19. at 17, junior yeah. deacon at 18. And um, by the time I started studying, and by the time I was ready to uh, preach my first initial sermon, which, by the way, my um, tutor was um, 
the former Bishop Douglas Miles. Okay. Um, and um, he tutored me uh, by permission uh, from my from my pastor at that time, which was uh, Bishop Aggie L. Brown Sr. Um, so uh, to, to, to sum a whole lot of things up, um, I, I preached my initial sermon um, that May and that August I got married. Married oh, wow. my, my high school sweetheart. Um, I know me. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. <laughs> and I know where God had, had brought me from. Amen. Uh, Amen. Before salvation. Yes, sir. And I knew that after salvation, there still probably might be some struggles. Um, so my high school sweetheart, who is a year and a half older than me, okay. um, I, I married her. Of course, you know. How long, um, how long have you been we, married now? Right now, we've been married for 38 plus years. Wow. And um, and as you know, um, and, and you know, I really love my wife and she loves me. Yeah, yeah, and we've that. had our um differences. But um, the love has always been been there. Yes, sir. <clears throat> um, then um, uh, went on in in, a, in the United States Army, uh, and while in the United States Army, I served as an assistant pastor mm -hmm. to uh, the um, who is now Apostle Robert Wise, um, and he was my pastor in Germany. Okay. And uh, he, his wife, his form, his wife at that time, uh, I served under them and became the assistant to to them. And um, after that, uh, came home and came back to uh, the church that I'm pastoring now. Okay. Um, but prior to that, uh, after I came back home, I felt a, a move of the spirit to to leave, and okay. I left and joined the New Psalmist Baptist Church where Bishop. Um, Walter, Scott, Walter Thomas. Scott Thomas is the pastor there. Walter Scott Thomas Sr. He's the pastor there. Um, I served that church for uh, eight years. Uh, not, nine years. Nine years. I served that church for nine years. Um, between eight and nine years. And um, then uh, came back to where I am now. Okay. Um, became a junior. Uh, um, well, became the youth pastor then became the assistant pastor okay and now i'm the senior pastor amen 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 mm -hmm. and how long have you been pastoring now total uh it's over it's over 12 years over 12 um, years. december 31st uh which is my birthday in fact wow, is man. when i took the the reins of the church in 2010 so, yeah. and and that that um August that, that as you were that April, mm -hmm. um, I um, had my installation service. Okay, but I actually took the reins of pastoring on December thirty first, twenty ten. So you became you got a, you became a year older. Became a year older. Past the new pastor. Past, that's it. And a new year. And a so, new year. <laughs> wow. Yeah. yeah that, <laughs> that kind of stuff. I don't think it's a coincidence. It's, no, it's, that's, it's all God. Might mean how God works, you know. Man may say, "Well, that's just coincidence." No, that's not a coincidence. That's how God everything lined up. Yeah. God doesn't waste anything. Mm -hmm. You are in His will. Everything has a set purpose. I really Amen. believe. So, Amen. Uh, so now, um, you became a bishop. How long after you were a pastor, senior pastor? In uh, twenty uh, fifteen, I, I became uh, a bishop. Twenty fifteen. So roughly, roughly uh, five years after senior pastoring. Okay. Uh, uh, I, I was called to be a bishop. Now, now for people who understand spiritual spiritual things, um, mm -hmm. and some people may not understand, they may not even understand what I'm talking about. But I was um, in church one day, and I was um, giving some words, and God allowed my me to see my my own spirit in front of me okay and i heard the spirit of god say bishop amen and um i said okay so i i, I said to the congregation at that time i said god just showed me something that you you <laughs> wouldn't believe right now so i went on to do what i did that same that same sunday after service the former pastor's wife came up to me and said you know you're a bishop don't you 
And I said, yeah, um, I, I, I know. Uh, and I said, it, it, it had come to pass. To make the long story short, um, I was consecrated uh, in uh, yeah. 2015. And okay. um, uh, I've been operating in that before I was, before I was consecrated. Okay. Uh, because I try to walk my life uh, not perfect, but I try to live oh, yeah. uh, uh, a life that was pleasing to God, though I may have displeased God. Yeah, you know, it comes down to this. Mm -hmm. I know we had talked about that, you know. Mm -hmm. um, being called, ministry is a calling. Yes. It's a calling on your life, you know. Mm -hmm. And like you and I always talk about, um, if you ain't called to be in this. Don't do it. Don't do it. <laughs> see, people see that they oftentimes see the glitz and glam. Like you get to mm -hmm. preach every Sunday, and you've been preaching a lot longer than me. I've been in ministry mm -hmm. since 2009, right? Mm -hmm. um, but I remember prior to becoming a, a full time pastor, a lead pastor, or a senior pastor in my church, uh, every young minister always wants to preach, right? Mm -hmm. And it, and it cracks me like a lot of guys, they get called. I always say we have a joke. They called on Sunday. They called on Monday, ready to preach on Sunday. Mm -hmm. like, no, it don't work that way. Absolutely. I mean, Jesus had to disciple them for three years. Paul mm -hmm. had to go away for three years. Mm -hmm. Why do you think you only got to take a week and you're supposed to be out here preaching in front of these people? Because if you really are a man or woman called by God, and you take very serious mm -hmm. what you did from that pulpit. Mm -hmm. because you know you're going to be held accountable for it. Absolutely. And you just don't go up there and say anything, wing anything, mm -hmm. because you know ultimately we're going to have to answer to God. Mm -hmm. You know, but I laugh about it because I'm saying, you know, uh, you've been preaching, you've been lead pastor now 12 years. So, mm -hmm. I mean, every, and you got, I mean, 52 Sundays in a year and you you call to bring a fresh word or rhema word every Sunday, you know, mm -hmm. and, and and you and you were preaching way before then too. I'm talking about mm -hmm. far like every Sunday mm -hmm. responsibility. Mm -hmm. I know you had. I know when I was there, you had gave me a Sunday, and and, and Doctor Blunt had one. Mm -hmm. But however, just still responsible. Mm -hmm. On Sunday, you're responsible for either preaching it or putting somebody mm -hmm. in that pulpit, right? Right. And the thing I laugh about now that I've been doing it for a little over a year, and these Sundays roll around quick. <laughs> <laughs> and you like, yes. and, and, and we're gonna get to the working part. That's why we're here today. Mm -hmm. Because you, you're not home. Not you, Monday, a full time pass probably take Monday and Tuesday off, relax. Mm -hmm. Then then they start to get back into it. I'm here from full time pass. I've talked to they used to take Monday Tuesday to mm -hmm. rest and recover from Sunday because Sunday's like the working day. Mm -hmm. Then they start building their sermon Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, mm -hmm. wrapping up Saturday. So they had four or five days to work on it. And their life is just pastoring. They may be mm -hmm. sick, maybe do some home visits, mm -hmm. but most of the time they can sit there and work on that. Not consider a sermon like an essay. It's like building mm -hmm. an essay every week. Mm -hmm. And and I said, now that I'm in it, I remember I was like, man, I want to preach. <laughs> I want to. I want to preach. So you get so excited. Somebody call you preach. You're so excited. And now that you are responsible for doing every week, and I'm like, Lord, I was being real. We were being real to the audience. People. Absolutely. I'm like, man. Lord, can you send me somebody to preach for me this side? <laughs> and I'm laughing. I'm not trying to take the interview. If I was laughing, Bishop, because... No, I, hey, this is your interview. I'm, uh, I'm just in I'm, I'm just being. I'm just talking to the folks, the real Talk folks. Talk to me. I was working past mm -hmm. it, right? Yes. Um, I had a preacher preach for me today. He's one of my mm -hmm. ministers. Mm -hmm. And he preaches one Sunday a month for me, right? Mm -hmm. and, and this was his Sunday to preach today. So he preached for me. And he was very long-winded. God oh, bless him. And he tried to pour. Hopefully, you know, hopefully he won't see the interview. No, I told, I give, I gave the feedback. And he gives me a lot of feedback. We just we have that brotherly love. He's like, man, I'm like minister. But we we can talk to each other, right? Yeah. But, it, but he, but, but he was on, the word was good, right? But right. Just, I just found him doing the things that I used to do because right. when you have the the opportunity to build out a sermon, you only get that one time a month, or sometimes once a quarter, once a mm -hmm. year. You try to put everything into the sermon. Right. Because you know, um, you don't know the next time you'll be preaching. Where right. you and I, you can say, I'm going to make this three part series. So exactly. I'll be today, I'll be back next Sunday. But when you don't have the opportunity, you know, so um, I just thought about yeah. that. Yeah. 
Mm-hmm. But one of the things that that um, I've I've said to uh, the the preachers that I have have um, helped to groom to become uh, ministers of the gospel, um, I give them adult learning theory. And the adult learning theory is if if you don't catch an adult within the first five minutes, you lost them. And if you if you hold an adult longer than 30, 40 minutes, you've lost them. Mm-hmm. The only difference is if the Holy Spirit on a spiritual level um, has captured them and then you realize that the sermon can go an hour and it doesn't feel like it was an hour because uh, it, it has been under an anointing to cause it to, to not feel like it's been an hour. Yeah. Yeah. So, so sure. I've taught the preachers that that came through my ministry. Um, um, if stop preaching, stop preaching when it's time to preach. Stop preaching. Be quiet. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Because <laughs> oh, because you wearing people out. You wearing them out. The people out. the people was glad to see you come up, and they're glad to see you sit down. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's too funny. But another point you made, you mentioned about mm-hmm. when you were called the bishop, right? Mm-hmm. I know, um, and I like what I want to say: ministering is a calling. Mm-hmm. You know, the Bible says we said the Bible says when a man desires to offer the bishop, he desires a, a good thing. But mm-hmm. the question comes in: Who gives you that desire? Right. Yeah. Um, I, I think. I think. I think it depends on individuals. Um, I believe that um, some people um, go because they want the authority. Right. You know, I believe, I believe that. I believe that some people, they, they want to be called bishop because it, 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 in, the, in the spiritual realm, it comes with an authority. Yes. Um, uh, but, but what's missing for a lot of people is the character, the, the qualifications oh, to be gosh. that. Yes, sir. Uh, and if we look at the qualifications of yeah. what a bishop is, a lot of people, and this is the truth, a lot of people oh, who God. are bishops, people who will call themselves apostles, um, even elders this who, who are supposed to be in the same uh, qualification. Yeah, yeah. They don't fit the qualifications of who they, they say they are. Well, they, they, they are disqualified. Um, they but but because of uh, who they know, um, because of what they they uh, wish to do, uh, somebody uh, puts them in place because maybe they have uh, the funds to pay to become that. Right, right. And, and for me, to be honest with you, um, God called me that. Amen. And so... Um, I, I accepted that. Every time God calls me to do something, I accept it. Even when I was called to preach, I didn't run from my ministry. Like a lot of people say, I ran from preaching. I, mm-hmm. I, I, I tried everything I, I could not to preach. I didn't do that. Mm-hmm. When, when, when God saved me, when God called me, I said, okay. Okay. Yeah. I didn't know. I said, okay, without realizing the, the, the extent <laughs> and, <laughs> and, and, and and the responsibility that comes with it in my ignorance. And I'm glad I was ignorant. So I accepted it and learned the yeah. responsibility of it as I went through it. Yeah. And um, but I also know that that uh it's 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 such it's such especially the, the different titles that we call ourselves. One one reason I really don't didn't want to be called bishop is because I've seen a lot of raggedy bishops. Mm. Amen. And that, that's just the truth. I've seen a lot of that's people who true. call themselves bishops and they were raggedy, they're just raggedy as that's raggedy not. can be. And, and and I'm not saying they weren't saved, because I don't know that. Only God knows that. But I do know this much. Character. The, 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 their right. character was raggedy. You mean I like I sent you yesterday mm-hmm. that on that judge um show. Yes. You know, the guy was a bishop. Mm-hmm. And I'm not here to, I'm not saying he wasn't called. It's not for me. Right. And we won't call his name. Right, I'm not calling him. But the <laughs> thing is, the way he conducted himself mm-hmm. in front of that court, in front of the judge, because he was being sued because they saw he was a 
got some 20 year old girl pregnant mm -hmm. 48 and the girl was not his wife mm -hmm. that's just it's public now so i'm not it's saying right. So. It, it, right. it's 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 oh. It's, on, it, it's there. We're not calling his name, though. No, Even but though it's public knowledge. It's public now. So here we are. You talk back to character. Here is 48-year-old man. Clearly, the young girl had problems because it came out later in court. Mm -hmm. And he prayed on that. Mm -hmm. Took advantage of that. And she, the baby wasn't his. Mm -hmm. But he had to go do a DNA test because he said he slept with her. And the way he was... The things he was saying, he like, you know, she was to jump off. I'm like, who talks like you are a man of God? You're supposedly. Called, supposedly. You know, I'm not saying all have sin. Right. Everyone. Everyone. And come short of God's yeah. glory. If you, if, like, you look up imperfect in the Bible, you may see my picture beside it. Mm -hmm. Mine too. I'm, like, I'm like, God, how you call <laughs> me? But God, I know, right? But God mm -hmm. always, he don't look for the perfect, but he looks for the heart. Mm -hmm. you know and that does not give me an excuse to go out there and say well god knows my heart no i ask god to mold me and you like I said mold me to the man you want mm -hmm. me to be mm -hmm. and i know a lot of that comes with character and okay if i mess up and i'm in you know all right, i messed up and i'm in front of the world and they see this but i'm not gonna go up there and name call he was acting like um I hate to say it, but like a, like like he was off the streets mm -hmm. she's a jump off and i'm like Man, what's the 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 distinguishedness of the office? I I, be, I believe um, you know um, in in general, a, a lot of people, as I stated before, they 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 like the title. They like the title. They, they like the title. They like the title of being called bishop because it comes with, um, depending on where you are, what part yeah. of the world you live in. Yeah. But in the spiritual realm. If you really know what what you are, if you really know what you what what you have accepted, yes. you you've accepted a great responsibility. And yeah. the thing about it is, you, you what you do, people people look at, and they're going to judge a lot of preachers based off of this one. Uh, you, you know, we we seen it all throughout the years. Whenever um, I tell an evangelist have messed up or, or uh, um, some some prominent uh, preacher that yeah. I could I could I could run a whole we list run, down we can. Easy. Uh, of, 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 of who who they were. Yep. But the reality of it is the reason I don't run the list down is because I want to make sure that my name don't <laughs> ever be in that list. Exactly because you know it will come. Exactly. So woe is me. I want to make sure that that I, I be careful on how I judge a person. So, exactly. so I don't, so one day I don't see my name amongst that list. <laughs> and they fall like, do you say not steal, but do you steal? <laughs> <laughs> you want like, you say it all up, but then you find yourself on that list. Exactly. Crazy, you know, and like I said, I mean, we talk amongst, like, to mm -hmm. me and you like, bro, we trust it. Right. You mm -hmm. share amongst each other, but very, very, very rarely or hardly any do I go outside out you. Mm hmm questions well i've got some concern because i know what that comes with this role and again i don't want to be out there and be my finger pointing at everybody and next thing you know i get myself in the jam mm -hmm. he's the main one see <laughs> he's going on and also they he probably doing the whole time you know they, yeah. you know, they, just, they it might have been only your second time <laughs> <laughs> I'm but, telling you, folks, <laughs> folks they could be brutal. They could be brutal on preachers, man. Right, right. So we just got to make sure we just walk and, and try to flee from even the appearance, right? Amen. But none of us are perfect. God never called anybody perfect. But we ask God to meet, just continue to, uh, we're, and I call it, we're in that sanctification stage where we're being made into his image. Mm -hmm. As long as you're in this flesh, the dirt body, you're going to have struggles. You're going to have things. Yeah. Honestly, mm -hmm. bring under the blood. So I thank exactly. you for the blood of Jesus. You're gonna have good days, you're gonna have mm -hmm. bad days, but hopefully all the good days outweigh outweigh the bad days to keep you from complaining. <laughs> <laughs> Not Amen. that you won't complain, to keep you from complaining. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> but while we got a couple more minutes left, uh, could we, this one this is part one of our series. Mm -hmm. We're gonna be talking. Uh, but um, I want to just ask one last question. Mm -hmm. um, again, we mentioned earlier, we're working men. I have a job. I work for Amazon. 
before time in our pastor, Christian Unity Temple. And you can tell us, I mean, you've been pastor, bishop in great, the great Dawn Baptist Church for 12 years, and you work for the D.C. government and things of that nature mm -hmm. uh, for the same amount of time. So mm -hmm. uh, a lot of us are in this position where we have to work and pastor. Mm -hmm. And it's a challenge. Yeah. So, so I want you to basically just talk to how do you balance it? Like how you've been doing a lot longer than I have been. And, you know, and you and I always come to you and I look for advice or ask you different questions. And I'm sure a lot of other pastors and preachers out there are trying to figure out how they navigate this mm -hmm. dual role of being a working pastor. Mm -hmm. So how would you, how, how do you do it? How do you maintain it? Like what has your experience been like? Um, for, for me, um, it's about priorities. Um, I, I, I realize, uh, cause, because again, I, I have never been that pastor that uh, is home and just pastoring only. Um, yeah. even, whether I was a youth pastor, whether I was an assistant pastor, or whether uh, uh, being a senior pastor. Um, it, it's times when I wish that I could just pastor. Yeah, that that that's all all that that uh, I had to do. I wish at times I wish that that's all that that's all I had to do. But what I've come to understand is that um, if 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 we if we call ourselves the men and or women of God, in our case, the men of God, yeah, um, and we say, God, send me here. I am. Send me. Yeah. Uh, then that means that uh, God will sometimes have us to play dual roles because he doesn't want you just in a four wall building, given a Bible study and given a sermon and, and maybe possibly three, four times a week. Mm -hmm. God wants you in the marketplace because yeah. he wants, he wants you to be an example to people in the marketplace. Yeah. Um, as as you know, prior to uh, me working for the D.C. government, I worked for the Maryland state government. Yes. Yeah. Um, prior to the Maryland state government, I worked for the United States Army, the yeah. government of the federal government. Yes. Uh, yeah. and, and been saved in all of those yes. uh, positions and been a preacher those. in all of those positions. Yeah. And, um, and I'm going to say um, it's not easy. Uh, especially when I worked as um, a correctional officer in prisons, mm. Work, worked in four different prisons, um, worked for the headquarters uh, of, of the uh, Maryland State uh, Correctional Di um, Division. And um, um, the blessing was I got into full-time uh, training there. Okay. Which, which opened up the door for me to have weekends off and apply ministry that way because see that's how God to do things when God when God when when God is with you and he wants you to be in the marketplace and he wants you to be in the work in the work in the marketplace as well as the church he's going to provide you uh the time and 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 manipulate the things so that you could be where you're supposed to be at the time you're supposed to be there doing what you're supposed to be doing yep Amen. And I know God has done that for me. It's not it's nothing that I've done per se. Now, now, how do I balance that time? Number one, um, I, I understand my priorities. Amen. My first priority is to my family. Yes, yes. You know, I know God. God is above all. So I don't. Amen. Mean, Amen. You know, a lot of people say God is first place. For me, God is above first place. So if you can't understand that, you don't understand you, it. You, but lost. to me, God is above first place. So He's not in. A first place he's above first place so I, he so i have to seek him about everything yeah um so 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 number one my priority is my family amen amen um so i don't i don't care about you know getting with that you know because we you know we we here in baltimore um and a lot of a lot of preachers that come to baltimore that don't realize until they come to baltimore baltimore is um uh, 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 clannish yes. when it comes to preachers. I've learned that. Yeah, you know they 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 have a clique. Yeah, and, and if and if you're not if you're not part of that clique, so to speak, then um, 
you, you can forget about having them in in that uh, arena or yep. forget about them pulling you in that arena yep. unless you're willing to be what they want you to be. Yeah, I've seen it. I, I, I'm not out that mob. You know, I don't, yeah. I, it, you know, you, you can jump through the hoops and, and, and clap your flippers right. and, and bark. Uh, that's not me. I'm not. So if, if, if you think I have to do this particular thing to be in your, in your, your circle, I'd rather not be in your circle. Amen. That's Amen. why I don't, that's why I don't belong to a fraternity. Because exactly. you, you're not going to have me do flips and 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 uh, howls and barks and beat because, me. And that's the same thing. I mean, that's another topic for another day. But that's the reality. I mean, I'm starting to see more preachers mm -hmm. wear their fraternity stuff in the pulpit, mm -hmm. whether it's Kappa, Alpha. I'm like, that's not what the pulpit for. It's I'm, not for that. that. Oh my lord! And I'm seeing that. That, that must be like the new trend now. Yeah. Oh, but. Uh, and I also would say this, um, you know, not not to stay with that too long, but I, I'm going to say this, uh, and I'm, I'm going to hit this real quick. As, as a Christian, and, 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 and some people can argue with me if they want, you're not supposed to be part of these secret societies anyway. Amen. So, Amen. so, so I, 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 I just, I'm, <laughs> that's another topic Talk for another that's day. The truth. You know what I'm saying? That's the so, truth. So well, I'm a secret uh, I, society for exactly. I was asked uh, twice to become a part of Illuminati. Mm. Amen. And I hit them with the message: I don't believe in secret, secret societies. I'm bringing a God. Thank you, but no, thank you. No, thank you. So, so that's that's me. Uh, um, uh, um, what they look for, I don't know, but they say I have what they're looking for. I don't, whatever that is. All I know is I love the Lord. I he heard my cry. Exactly. He pleaded my every throne. I'm saved and yeah. I'm going to hasten to his throne. So exactly. that's what we have that's fellowship that's, of darkness. Exactly. Period. No, so no. exactly. And I don't want to go through some ritual and uh, put something on me that will later go to my. My family and my family's family. Making the covenant. When they it, do it, they're covenant. You're making the right. covenant. Exactly. The covenant I want to be under is the covenant of Jesus Christ. Of Jesus Christ. That's and it. The only covenant I'm bound to. Exactly. It's blood covenant. And a lot of these places, they do rituals. They take blood. You be, That's why they call them secrets. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. When stuff comes out. People who come out of them, they tell you some of the stuff they do. Mm -hmm. My Lord. Right. I've seen, um, recently, a couple of pastor friends of mine I know. Mm -hmm. attorneys and these masons and all. I'm like mm -hmm. what are you doing preaching the gospel is enough enough by itself by and, itself <laughs> <laughs> how do you find time like, to be a, a, a kappa a, a masonic a pa I'm like, how do you do it exactly again the priorities my oh. priority is is my family first Amen. if i can't if i can't minister home first then the rest of it to me is phony. Exactly. That's how I feel. I feel if I can't if I can't be the best husband that I can be, the best father that I can be, the best grandfather that I can be, home first. Then the rest of it is phony. If I can't if I can't uh, 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 operate in the spirit of love in my house, and then go and try to operate in the spirit of love in the church, it's phony. Amen. It goes back to what Paul said. You nothing but a bunch of sounding brass and tinkling cymbals. Yeah. Um, so, number one, the, the, the balance that is my family come first. Amen. Number two is when it comes to ministry, I'm I'm a I'm a minister to the people and love the people. So um, I have to love home first, mm -hmm. then I can love the people. So I love the people, though the people might be unlovable amen <laughs> that's the truth that is the truth Woo! with the holy spirit thank the Spirit to give you that love he gives you what you need to love really the people love the people love, right. the, people, love the people and really so love uh, um yeah. with that so so now that's the balance so now um i have a job too so sometimes sometimes does it get tiring yes but you, you have to learn how to balance you. 
And as long as you put your family first, mm -hmm. you 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 will alleviate a whole lot of problems. Because Amen. I know I know of a lot of people, a lot of pastors, who have yep. put the church before their family, and that family have gone crazy, yeah. and that family resents them because yeah. they gave the church more they than they them. gave the family. I've seen it. Then they always wonder why. Then they wonder, and often they always like, why are the preacher's kids the worst? That's one right. of the reasons. Right. So as a pastor, you're going to be under attack. The dog, automatically. Automatically, you're under attack. If you can't get you, you try to get those around you. Mm -hmm. That's why what you said, your priority, you have your family has to be your priority. Mm -hmm. You have to be praying over them. You have to be spending time with them and so forth. But oftentimes, they said when they neglect that family and you're already under attack, man, those family members go astray. And then everybody looking at it like, man, how you run a church? You can't even run in your own house. Exactly. And the Bible tells you that. Bible the tells Bible you. says if a man can't have control over his own household, how can he have any, any rule in the church? You can. So learn how to rule your own house properly first. Amen. Amen. You know, before you, you come to the church, because your family, one thing, one thing we know about church people, um, and, and if you don't know, people that might listen to this uh, um, thing later, is that people look at the pastor's wife when the pastor is preaching. If anybody can see his see her face, uh, they look at her to determine him. <laughs> yes, they do. They, they look at the children to determine him. And and they they can see if if um, if he's that at home. If, or if he's just that in church, because the, the body language of the wife or the children will show it. They'll have their mouth twisted or they, they, they will be totally disengaged yep. or they'll just go along with the program out of fear. Because <laughs> <laughs> you know, that when they get home, they might get beat by the apostle, bishop, right. elder, reverend, pastor, minister. Or verbal you know, beating or mental beating. beating. Exactly. 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 So, so, um, for me, balancing it out with work and everything, um, God, God, as far as when I be, we, when I started doing um, the pastor role, whether it was a youth pastor, even up to the senior pastor, God has given me a teaching job. Amen. So I, I teach and have my weekends off unless otherwise stated Amen. from the job. So I'm teaching at work. I'm teaching in church. Amen. You know, so the the the, the jobs uh, they they mirror each other, except one is for a secular, and one is for a spiritual. <clears throat> for me, um, you, at times I have authority over particular groups. In church, you have authority over particular groups. So um, God has given me that to mirror, and believe it or not, a lot of times when there's a problem going in the secular. Seem like I'm dealing with this almost the same kind of problem yeah. on the spiritual. Wow. So they mirror each other all the way around. So I know I'm where I'm supposed to be, doing what I'm supposed to do at the time I'm supposed to be doing it. And and for me, that's how I balance it. Now, do I get unbalanced sometimes? Yes. When do I get unbalanced? When I take focus off of staying balanced. Amen. In other words, um, I I can get too many, I can accept too many engagements mm -hmm. um, uh, without realizing I, I've accepted too many engagements. Okay. And once you realize that, then you can get off balance and then you can't wait till you finish those engagements. So you, <laughs> you regroup and say, okay, yeah. now I got to, I got to make sure I don't, I don't do that again. So sometimes you have to say no. Right. No. And sometimes, you know, as, as for me, I had to delegate some authority. Amen. In other words, um, as, as you know, um, what the job I have and where I work, Amen. by the Amen. time I get home, it was difficult for me because I was doing it for a minute, teaching Bible study, preparing Bible study, yeah. teaching it, coming all the way from D.C. back to Baltimore to teach Bible study after being on the road. Uh, sometimes two hours, three hours, depending on the weather, um, to get in, get my stuff, teach a Bible study, um, 
and and then come home and try to get some rest and do this thing all over again. So God God reminds you, you got preachers. That's what I say. You got yeah. ministers. That's what God yeah. told me. You have ministers. You don't have to do that because in my mind, I'm the pastor. I got to teach the Bible study. But then the Lord let me know, no, you don't. You have ministers. Amen. So, you know, I, I, I had gave you that responsibility yeah, 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 until yeah. God called you out to pastor. And Amen. then now I gave it to one of the other ministers Amen. who was doing a very fine job with it. Uh, uh, so I had to delegate. So, and that's how you stay balanced. Um, there's some things, though you're the pastor, though you're the bishop, <laughs> um, you're the apostle. Right, right. Delegate. Delegate. You're still responsible, but delegate. You right. Know. And like I said, you delegate and you delegate to those who can handle it. Exactly. Responsibility. Make sure you put the right person in the right place. Exactly. Day, the buck stops with you. It stops Amen. with you. I mean, so just make sure that we ask God for that wisdom and mm -hmm. he'll and send you the right people. Mm -hmm. And then as you develop them, that makes them sharper, makes their tool chest sharper. Amen. If God calls them out, they'll be more prepared. Amen. I've been in churches where the pastor wants to do everything. Mm -hmm. Me know? too. And I mean, it's like, man, you got a toolbox over here. Right. Use your tool. Use your wrench. Use, Use your wrench. wrench. Use the <laughs> hammer. You got you got a toolbox here. And right. we said, I met one time church man. I remember I was a pastor. He was trying to do everything, and he uh, he had did Bible study, did Sunday school. He led he did worship lead and he preached. And we sat there. I sat there like man. And me and my friend for another minute. So we like he did everything. Like does he not trust us or? Like, I mean, that's another subject for another day, but it's like, I just remember sitting there like, watch this guy do everything, even worship lead. Mm -hmm. They use a lot of pastors, you know, the past, you want somebody else to lead, conduct service, let them worship lead service mm -hmm. and preach. Man, he worship lead too. <laughs> <laughs> and we just sat there looking pretty. I'm like, this is, <laughs> I'm like, this is okay. I'm, I'm going to. Improve my teaching and preaching. If I'm just, I right, got some sitting here to make you look good, you know, like yeah, your, uh, you know, you know, um, what, 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 what? I believe that um, God gives us ministers and and uh, teachers for is to help them. Um, while it is our responsibility, yeah. uh, as as the pastor. We, we don't, you know, one thing we know as a pastor, I don't have to let anybody preach. No, you don't. Absolutely. Right. I, I can preach every Sunday um, Good. because that's what I'm called to do. And I'm the pastor. Uh, however, uh, it, it's I think it's good to give the ministers the opportunity, especially to read the scripture, especially just do a prayer um, to give them opportunity to be in front of the people. So that they, when it's time for them to, to speak, preach, that they're yeah. able to do so. Um, but at the same time, um, that preacher needs to understand that um, you, you're here to serve, um, not necessarily to preach. And, 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 and I know how it is, you know, I've been there, I know how it is. Yeah. But at the same time, I understand, I understood that, um, well, that's the pastor. That's the one that's preaching. And um, so if, if he, she wants me to do this, then um, they'll call me. If Amen. not, then so be it. Somebody else will call me to preach. And that's the thing, what, what I try to tell the ministers where I'm at, because especially during COVID, and that's something else I want to I wanna touch on while we're here. Um, I'm glad to be a full-time uh, uh, man working. Yes, sir. You understand? Because see, <laughs> I see, get it. see, because <laughs> yes, sir. when 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 COVID came to us in 2020, March 2020, when it hit the United States hard in March 2020, um, a lot of churches went empty. You know, a lot of churches that was crying about um, having Facebook or YouTube, you know, because of their congregation. 
Uh, I kind of experienced that too when I first started Facebook before COVID, when I first became the pastor. But I didn't have nobody to operate it for me until God sent you to come. And then all you had to do was go into it and, and put it on. And you brought the YouTube to us, but the Facebook was already there. Amen. Um, so all you had to do is go in and pull it up. I yep. thank God that you was there. And now it's 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 still in operation yeah, and, and you still run the YouTube. Amen. So thank God for that. <laughs> <laughs> so so because I was working, because um we 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 we're working pastors, um, we didn't have to worry about where the salary was gonna come from. Lord have mercy. Because I don't Amen. whether whether the church gives me anything or not, I'm good. Amen. Same I'm here. good. I can still take care of my house, pay for my cars, and 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 help help people if I need to help. You know what I'm saying? Um, so I don't I don't need the the salary from the church. Thank Amen. God they give me a little something. Yeah. But yeah. I I don't I don't need that. You know. Um, and same with you. You know. I know. I know. I know. You know. <laughs> I ain't gonna put you out there, but I know you don't need. It. <laughs> you know, yeah, you know. But, but, but thank you know, God for the job. Yeah. Amen. You know, so and I didn't real, to, the Bible says mm -hmm. a worker is worthy of his hire. That's right. And you pass when you're working. You're supposed to get it. You know, you're supposed to get something. You're supposed yeah. to get you still, They should bless, like the scripture says, you're supposed to bless, you're supposed to take your carnal to bless me for the mm -hmm. spirit. Mm -hmm. Money is a carnal. Exactly. So, you I mean, a workman is worthy of his hire. So don't get it wrong. Mm -hmm. ain't, no, ain't no such thing, no starving pastor. Exactly. Your job, your boss, all the other company CEOs, they don't starve. Exactly. They, they break in millions. Nobody's exactly. talking about that. But the man of God who's giving you this, your spiritual vitamin, mm -hmm. the doctor for your soul, mm -hmm. they got to be starving. Or they right. Should, they shouldn't be or they shouldn't have this or they shouldn't have, they that, shouldn't have that. You know, no. but I, 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 I discount all that kind of stuff. When, when people say what I ain't supposed to have or whatever, I, I shouldn't be driving that or I shouldn't dress this way or that way. As long as I'm I'm not uh, offensive uh, Man, uh, to to what the word of God says about my apparel. Exactly. I ain't worrying about you. Amen. I'm not worrying about you, whether you don't like it because I drive this particular car or 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 and you think I'm supposed to drive a, another kind of car. Right. Uh, not that there's anything wrong with these cars. You think I'm supposed to drive a Volkswagen Beetle. Right, and I decide to drive yeah. uh, uh, <laughs> uh, uh, a Jaguar. Right. So, so regardless what you what you think I should drive, I don't care about. They, they go ahead and think what you want to think. It, you you are not the one that's that's giving me exactly. and taking care of me. So, if, and if God didn't want me to have it, He would bring me under conviction, and, right. and I'd give it. I'd quickly give it away. Amen. Give it up. You know. But I thank God that I was working. Yeah. So when COVID hit, I I, I didn't miss a beat. Amen. You know. Um, thank God that I didn't get sick during that time. Amen. I did get COVID yeah. this year. I got COVID for the first time. But thank God that uh it didn't uh Damn. knock me down. Yeah. It didn't hurt me, you know. Oh, yeah. I, still, yeah. Yeah. I had it, it I, I had the symptoms for about two weeks. Um, and they weren't to me. They weren't that serious. My wife said I look worse than than what than what I felt. You know, she she like I thought she was going to die. Well, to me, I didn't feel like I was going to die. You know what I'm saying? I, I, no, that ahead. wasn't even in my, in my in my thought process. To me, it was just a bad cold fluish type thing. But anyway, but no, um, you know, yeah, so. yeah. You mean? Like you said, you know, um, folks, I mean, one thing, they will always try to shape you into what they want you to be. Mm -hmm. And the only one I want to shape me in is God. Amen. I mean, not say I can't take feedback, advice. Of course, that's part of know, life. If it's coming from the right source, and, mm -hmm. and you know, and one of thing like you said earlier, God does speak to us. Mm -hmm. The Holy Spirit will talk to you. He will mm -hmm. convict you. He will. Mm -hmm. I know for me, the best time he gets my attention in, 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 in those sleep hours. Mm -hmm. He'll lay something bit. Sometimes he'll be real direct. Mm -hmm. it, it, a dream visual, he'll just bring correction. And you mm -hmm. know, Lord. 
So folks don't think they like, who's who tell the pastor to do God. Mm-hmm. And we're accountable to you all. Mm-hmm. We I mean, you know, I'm maybe pastor, I'm accountable to you. Mm-hmm. you know, I'm responsible for you. You know, I'm not here to lord over you. I'm here, I'm here to uh, to help guide you mm-hmm. as we sojourn through this journey called Earth to the promised land. Mm-hmm. I want you all to go there with me. You Amen. know. Um, so you know, Bishop, I thank you tonight um for our this part one of many. Mm-hmm. I don't know how many parts, but we got a lot to talk about. Amen. There's a lot of preachers and especially young preachers. I'm a young pastor. I've been preaching while I'm a young pastor. A lot of folks who need to hear um that you know, that first you're not in it by yourself. Amen. There's some other folks out here who's gone going through the same thing or have gone through, and you can learn from it. We can learn from each other. If someone else has navigated that path, show me the way. Mm-hmm. <laughs> show me the way. Mm-hmm. Let me go in those footsteps. Okay, this is how you navigate through the okay. You know, you know, and there's nothing wrong with learning from each other, learning from one. Yes, another. absolutely. We have to talk. It's not a competition. Absolutely. We're talking because at the end of the day, if you are true, if you truly been called by God, it's it's it's, it's not an easy path, mm-hmm. but it's rewarding. Right. It's not easy, but it's very rewarding. Yes. And um and um and I just thank God that we have this platform, this this yeah. YouTube channel that we can begin to share. Thank God he led it on our hearts to begin to have these conversations um so we can put them out there for the for other folks to see them and 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 learn and we could probably continue to expand. And so um so Bishop, uh thank you for your time tonight, sir. Um uh, and um so we're gonna have a part two coming up. And we're gonna and we're gonna figure out what that looks like, but we wanna get into like I know we say I want to talk. I said I want to talk part two. I want to talk to Bishop about how do you stay connected to preaching the true gospel? Mm, good message. Good, good. How do you how do you avoid the temptation of telling people what they want to hear? Not what the, as opposed to telling what they need to hear. Mm-hmm. And I know for a fact. <laughs> I, I know you <laughs> I, I know you use that sword you know and you operate you know and and, it, and and it's taught me because I told you one time I was like I was trying to start preaching to please the people and and and, and, and one day the Lord corrected me in the middle of writing a sermon I remember I was writing the part said this part they're gonna love this part <laughs> <laughs> I never get the spirit was like don't do it mm-hmm. And it shocked me because it was a, I didn't hear a vocal voice. Mm-hmm. It, 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 it was that spirit. inner voice. The inner voice hit my spirit, and I like, and I stopped in my tracks. And then shortly thereafter, I came to work um, under you, and I got to observe how you are truly honest to the Word of God. Mm-hmm. And you truly preach the Word of God. And Thank you, you so much. You, like what well, you in some certain you're, you're edifying, you're rebuking, you're you know I mean, you're exhorting. You I mean everything that we're called to do, you know, uh reproving, all that, you know, and you do it well, you know, and Thank you, you so what the Lord tells you to preach, and you you tell them what the Lord's will thus say of the Lord, not what thus say the people want to hear, mm-hmm. but what thus say of the Lord. And people who truly mm-hmm. want to learn and, and grow um have to honor that. Because um, you know, Pastor Pastor Dorrington. Um, because Bishop, I, I, I um, like I said, if 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 I want to hoop, um, and which you know, I I very rarely do any hooping. Once in a while, a hoop might come out, but yeah. um, if if, if, yeah. if I want if I wanted to be a hooping, um, flesh pleasing pastor, that's easy because right. I can sing. I can say with the best of them, you know, and, and, the best of them, put it all and, together. And I, you know, I, I know if 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 I want to do that, to please the flesh of a person, it's easy. It's right. easy. But right. at the end of the day, is God satisfied with it? Amen. Did it, when when somebody when somebody dies, um are, are they gonna be able to say that uh I received a word from my pastor or my pastor didn't tell me, mm-hmm. um, you know, that, but like I said, that's, that's another subject for us to, yeah. to unpeel. We're going to unpeel that one because right. I know somebody, some preacher right now was tempted. 
mm-hmm. to tell the people what they want to hear. Mm-hmm. And at the end of the day, if you truly believe this word of God, we're going to stand before God and have to give it. Amen. Truth. And the woe to those who preach. Woe. And woe to those that scatter my sheep. Woe to those that scatter my sheep. If you truly believe that word, and I believe mm -hmm. it. Mm -hmm. I believe it. 100. Stand up before the most high God and his train fills the temple. <laughs> He's high and lifted up. And now I'm standing for him. They have to give an account. And you can't lie. Well, That's yeah. another subject. You you in his presence and you want to lie, but you can't lie. <laughs> Everything's open, exposed. You. Your flesh going to testify against you. Against you. No, you know, no, you didn't say. You knew we, you yeah, you did. We, we was there. We was right we there. We, we was, remember? Remember? Remember, remember what we was doing? I, I, and, and your flesh is going to testify against you. Exactly. You know, and I like it. So me, so um, so I believe the word of God wholeheartedly, and I know you do. So uh, I'm going to tell the people what thus saith the Lord. Amen. God knew exactly what those people need. So, hey, Bishop Barr, thank you again for your time. Love you. Love you much. Um, and when we come back for part two on how does Bishop stay honest to preaching the word of God. And we'll have that probably within another two, three weeks. Amen. 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 Have a good night, Bishop. And I'll God talk bless to you later. We'll be in touch. Amen. All right. Take care. Bye-bye.